Hello and welcome. We are more or less uh, done with uh, with the magnetism. Uh, the the <coughs> essential topics we, con uh, we covered in magnetism uh, are uh, basically uh, the uh, atomic uh, responses uh, to um, a magnetic field, which is uh, uh, done in the first part, and then we uh, worked on the long-range magnetic order uh, of uh, 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 mag uh, permanent magnets like uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> the insulating magnetic materials, which are uh, kind of ferromagnet, para uh, ferromagnet, uh, antiferromagnet, and so on. Uh, and then what we did was to write down the model uh, from which uh, these uh, long range orders can be derived and can be understood microscopically. And uh, thereafter we uh, showed uh, in certain cases uh, that these models are exactly solvable uh, in very fortunate circumstances. Then after that we uh, uh, calculated the excitation spectrum of uh, one particular case which is a Heisenberg ferromagnet and uh, showed that uh, there are at uh, any finite temperature there are um, a large number of these uh, excitations which reduce the magnetization uh, from its saturation value. Uh, <coughs> and then uh, this was in three dimension, but uh, then we also mentioned that there is a very strong theorem which is uh, extremely important called uh, Marvin Wagner theorem which uh, tells us that uh, with uh, models which have a continuous uh, symmetry uh, like for example, x y model or um, x y model is a model where only x and y component of spins are uh, uh, kept and uh, it is one more step from the uh, uh, Ising model uh, and the Heisenberg model is where uh, all three components are kept. Now, in uh, x y and uh, Heisenberg models for example, where the spin can uh, have uh, values uh, uh, the order parameter which defines the, uh, uh, the uh, ordered state uh, has continuous symmetry. In such cases these magnetic excitations, these excitations proliferate uh, in dimensions equal to or less than 2 and they proliferate in such a way that at any finite temperature they kill all the order. So, that is uh, one thing we should remember that the examples we chose are very specific 1D Ising model and uh, uh, Heisenberg model in 3D where we had uh, uh, ordered states uh, at finite uh, uh, 1D Ising model does not have, but 2D Ising model has order in uh, at finite temperature and 3D Heisenberg model of, of course, uh, also has uh, uh, ordered state at finite temperature. So, that is the message that we got from uh, study of magnetism and uh, it is uh, historically one of the most important uh, 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 branches of condensed matter uh, physics uh, and it teaches a lot about how uh, uh, quantum mechanics uh, plays out uh, at the microscopic level at, at, the, atom, at the level of atoms and uh, where it is supposed to play. And, uh, the, and, and it leads to uh, states which are long range order. Although the interaction may be short range, the order that it uh, produces can become uh, a long range and give rise to macroscopic quantum states. So, in that line of uh, studies, uh, we will study one of the most exotic uh, macroscopic quantum state, which is uh, superconductivity. Uh, that is what uh, our next topic is and uh, it was discovered in 1911 in Leiden by a Dutch physicist called uh, Heike Kamerling Honnes and uh, what he did was that he was uh, 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 basically trying to generate low temperatures in his lab and uh, he was at that time he could uh, go down to the lowest temperature uh, uh, in the world. and. Uh, so, uh, he's, he was studying one of the other metals uh, to see what happens and the reason is that that for metals for example, uh, we know that sigma is n square tau by m was the Drude formula is the Drude formula and so rho is uh, m by n square into 1 by tau. 
Now, uh, this 1 by tau has contributions from uh, many many things 1 by tau impurity plus 1 by tau uh, electron electron interaction plus 1 by tau uh, electron phonon interaction. Okay, so, 1 by tau impurity, tau impurity is, uh, is basically a constant uh, <coughs> does not depend on temperature too much. Uh, at low temperature certainly does not depend on temperature at all uh, and it. Uh, so, uh, 1 by tau E E this uh, depends on temperature as T square at uh, low temperatures and this depends on temperature as T to the power 5 well below the th uh, theta d by temperatures. So, essentially rho goes as some constant plus uh, uh, some B T square. Uh, at low temperatures and this is what uh, 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 Dr. Ones was trying to uh, look at and uh, check whether uh, the metals really do behave uh, this way. Uh, indeed of course, nowadays we know that uh, many metals do not behave this way, uh, but um, good metals uh, more or less uh, give similar behavior uh, and that is what uh, in those days. Uh, this was the formula they had and this is what uh, he was trying to check. Uh, the <coughs> and uh, so, then, uh, then what uh, uh, what he found was that of course, in uh, gold and platinum for example, uh, he got a uh, uh, <coughs> temperature uh, resistivity versus temperature which was uh, going down smoothly. Uh, and uh, so, uh, this was there was no surprise here. Uh, the, the temperature up to which he could go down it was behaving like this. Okay. But then in, in uh, mercury, uh, he chose mercury because mercury is one of the most pure metals you can get and then there was a big surprise and what he found was that uh, mercury the resistivity just dropped uh, immeasurably below his uh, instrumental resolution okay, at 4 point, around 4.2 degree Kelvin. So, this was a real real surprise and uh, so this picture is shown in, uh, in here uh, on the left this was the original picture of uh, Kamerling Ones. Uh, so, this was on a graph paper which is what uh, students uh, use these days also to draw plots. So, this was the reproduction from his play paper and uh, that uh, shows that uh, he could measure up to 10 minus 5 ohms and uh, his resistivity went below that. <coughs> so, this he he was a person who was uh, he realized that uh, this is a new state of matter and he actually reported it saying that this is probably a new uh, state of matter. Uh, so, so, this is the history. Uh, the he on has passed a current through a very um, pure mercury wire and measured its resistance and he, st he steadily as he steadily lowered the temperature and at 4.2 degree the electrical resistance vanished. By vanishing one basically means below the instrumental resolution goes below the instrumental resolution. So, superconductors are uh, materials having zero resistivity uh, and uh, uh, they behave as diamagnetic below the transition temperature. So, these are the two characteristic features uh, that uh, define a uh, superconductor. <coughs> so, general properties of superconductor are that the virtually zero resistance by virtually again I mean that uh, uh, ideally it should be zero resistance, at, uh, <coughs> but uh, of course, uh, you measure you measure resistance in some some instrument and an instrumental resolution determines uh, what is the minimum you can measure. And there are of course, uh, effects of impurity the purer the metal the better uh, the transition is, uh, uh, but uh, uh, unless the 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 impurity is uh, magnetic and uh, there is not much effect on uh, uh, the superconductivity as such the transition temperature sometimes uh, uh, usually, uh, goes down uh, if you have strong uh, disorder, but uh, for non magnetic disorder in uh, most superconductors that we discuss uh, we 
uh, do not see much change in superconductivity. Superconductivity basically survives. <coughs> so, there are some materials that are listed here zinc, aluminum, tin, uh, mercury, I, there are others uh, which are uh, uh, even higher uh, uh, superconducting temperature, uh, but then you can see that uh, for example, lead has uh, 7 degree nearly 7.2 or so degree, uh, <coughs> niobium is uh, 9.2 or 9.3 degree uh, that is the highest elemental superconductor with highest T c. Uh, <coughs> then uh, suddenly there is there are these two materials that are listed uh, Y B A 2 C U 3 O 7 for example, it is a ceramic material. Uh, undoped material is a, is actually a an insulator, uh, a magnetic insulator, and it becomes superconductor at around 90 degree Kelvin when doped. So that is a remarkable uh, jump from 4 to 9 to 10 degrees and 10 degrees uh, Kelvin to 90 degrees. Okay, we will come back to it. Uh, uh, at a later stage. This is another example where this is superconductor which is a ceramic material which has T c about 125 degree Kelvin. <coughs> so, this is the typical uh, feature that you will expect for uh, for a non superconducting material uh, this will go like this uh, there is a residual resistivity always because of uh, impurities. Uh, and uh, no matter what you do in a material, you will always have impurities in it like defects and so on. Uh, so, it will tend towards uh, uh, a finite value. One uh, as, uh, assumes and asserts that at 0 temperature everything will become a, a super every metal will become a superconductor, but uh, there are materials where superconductivity has not been found so far like gold for example, uh, <coughs> but anyway. Uh, it is just that maybe we have not gone down to sufficiently low temperatures, but that is a different matter we will not discuss. Superconductor has this typical feature that it uh, follows this uh, t uh, uh, constant plus t square kind of behavior and then suddenly drops. Okay. At least it rises with uh, temperature as I said and then suddenly at certain temperature finite temperature it drops to 0 immeasurably to 0. Okay, so, there is uh, there are several things that one uh, actually um, studies this I will come uh, later. First let me just discuss this uh, conventional things which is uh, uh, the value of critical or transition temperature T c of a superconductor is found to vary with its isotopic mass. So, supposing a material is superconductor uh, uh, and you are replacing the atom by its isotope and then you will find that the superconducting T c uh, is uh, proportional to if you can do it for several isotopes you will find it is proportional to 1 by root m. And this is called the uh, isotope effect it is a very major uh, uh, landmark in the understanding of uh, the old superconductors and the mechanisms because it tells you that there is an involvement of the, the square root of mass appears in the frequency of uh, a vibration of lattice right uh, and that means that uh, uh, this lattice is somehow connected to superconducting mechanism whatever is responsible for superconductivity. So, this is a, a strong indicator that uh, uh, superconductivity uh, of the type that uh, conventionally we discuss uh, is uh, uh, has a, law, a strong dependence from uh, lattice or phonons to be precise from phonons <coughs> that is vibrations. Then there is a magnetic field effect which is uh, very important as far as applications are concerned. Uh, the, uh, the thing is that every superconductor has a critical magnetic field above which it becomes non, uh, non superconducting. So, that is called uh, uh, uh <coughs> called a critical magnetic field. So, below T c this happens uh, even for z for very very low temperatures way below T c if you apply a strong magnetic field at some point the superconductor will become non superconductor. Uh, <coughs> then of course, there is this uh, famous uh, uh, notion that there is a persistent current and it is measured 
and if you are take a superconductor below its TC of course, if this is superconducting state and you allow and, and you let a current uh, to flow through it which is uh, which is what superconductor does it allows currents to flow without dissipation and and one can actually check how long does the current survive and it is uh, found that it would be the from the the measurement that has been done on a laboratory time scale for example one can extrapolate that this will be more than the age of the universe uh, so in, in very clean materials. So, that uh, really is, a, is an amazing discovery that the current set up in a superconductor will last almost forever till eternity. <coughs> this is a very interesting uh, new uh, direction in super research of superconductivity effect of pressure and stress. This was predicted long time back actually. Uh, the <coughs> there are many materials which are insulating, but under uh, high pressure they become uh, met, uh, metallic and the uh, notion was that, that once they become metallic they may become superconductor. And one of the holy grails of uh, such research uh, was uh, metallic hydrogen. So, it is, it is uh, known or it, it was predicted and now it is known that metallic uh, that hydrogen uh, under extreme high pressure. Uh, becomes uh, metallic and uh, that if that happens that will become uh, a superconductor with a TC which is nearly 300 degree Kelvin or even more. So, that was the estimate uh, theoretical estimate and uh, so people actually went ahead and finally, uh, finally found that metallic state, but the superconducting conductivity has not yet uh, been observed there. On the other hand, sulfur, oxygen, for example, uh, they become superconductor under very high pressure. Uh, so, so these are uh, interesting observations. For example, uh, even iron, which is uh, a magnetic material, and magnetic materials are supposed to be non-superconducting. We will uh, explain the reasons later on. And even swim, uh, even iron becomes a non-magnetic uh, uh, has a non-magnetic phase at a very high uh, pressure, and that that phase uh, has become uh, superconducting. So so there are many examples where these things these things happen. The high pressure uh, leads to superconductivity, and uh, uh, the latest in that saga is uh, the class of materials which are uh, uh, hydride materials. It started with uh, H 2 S from a group in Germany uh, Drozdov and company and uh, he, they, they went to very very high pressure nearly 200 giga Pascal uh, and uh, that is an enormous pressure of course. And at that pressure they found H 2 S uh, became a superconductor at, at fairly high temperature. In that saga, the latest is the lanthanum hydride LH10. Super, these are called superhydrides. And uh, uh, look at the TC, for example, uh, as a function as as you in increase the pressure. Uh, so, uh, at about uh, 170 gigapascal, uh, this uh, has a superconducting TC uh, more than 205 degree Kelvin. And uh, uh, latest one that they found in this hydride series uh, has a TC at about, about um, 245 to 50 degree kel uh, Kelvin. So, that is really remarkable. Uh, these papers have come out in uh, nature and uh, <coughs> uh, so, they, this group is trying to uh, push the idea of uh, having a superconductivity at very high temperature uh, and of course, the holy gra grail is again to go to room temperature, but then if the pressure is so high uh, one does not know what applications uh, will come out of it, but nevertheless the fact that something can be superconducting at that high temperature is uh, still amazing. And uh, for, a few, for any scientist that is a, a remarkable discovery and uh, one has to understand what is uh, happening in the system. Uh, what what causes that high temperature uh, TC, <coughs> high value of TC? So okay, so that is uh, that is uh, one situation. But then there are uh, materials like metals, uh, like uh, 
silver, copper, gold, uh, which are which were not found to be superconducting, and uh, tin has been has become superconductor has been found to be superconducting at millikelvins or or even less. So, so there are metals like uh, lead, mercury. Uh, 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 these are fairly high, high, high by high. I mean, uh, six, seven degrees, four degrees, and so on. Uh, whereas there are other metals which are better metals uh, than these, uh, uh, which are uh, non-super like platinum, gold, uh, silver, copper. They are uh, much better metals, better metals, but uh, not uh, uh, do not have uh, higher T C than these. They actually have very, very low T C. And in some cases, we haven't been able to uh, make them superconductor. So that is a sort of um, a mystery in a sense that one tries to understand it based on whatever understanding we, uh, we developed microscopic understanding. Uh, but not all is uh, understood. There are other superconductors which are uh, uh, more uh, so-called exotic. Uh, these are. Uh, uh, for example, heavy fermion superconductors, then superconductors with uh, different class of order parameters, uh, which are uh, not the conventional uh, uh, S wave, I will explain isotropic superconductors. And uh, there are even superconductors, uh, conductivity and magnetism coexisting. Uh, the heavy fermion superconductors, for example, were uh, a big mystery and uh, mostly containing cerium or uranium. And they, they, uh, this, they are still being worked on, and one is trying to understand what is uh, happening in those systems. So, in heavy fermion superconductors, in heavy fermions, you remember we discussed uh, long back that uh, these are materials where the uh, the electron-electron interaction is very strong, strong repulsive interaction, and uh, you normally don't expect uh, superconductivity to form in in such a system. Nevertheless, they do become some of them become superconductors, and uh, that is still a mystery being worked on and more than uh, nearly 30 years, uh, more than 30 years uh, after it have gone have, have passed since their discovery, and we are still working on uh, a basic understanding of those things. So, superconductivity is still an unsolved problem in that sense. There is a class of superconductor which is uh, this. Uh, uh, as I said, this uh, mercury, lead, uh, niobium, uh, NB3G, and all that, where uh, this is more known. Uh, so these are this is a list of uh, superconductors, a, a large list of uh, superconducting elements. And uh, as you can see, see that niobium has the highest superconducting TC amongst the element, uh, nearly 9.3 degree Kelvin. Uh, <coughs> so th these were better understood. Uh, than the new superconductors that have very high uh, temperatures. Okay. So, there is a very important effect that defines the superconducting state uh, and that effect is called the Meissner effect. And what it tells us is that uh, it is related to the magnetic field uh, effect on a superconductor. So, in, in a nutshell, it is basically saying that a superconductor is a perfect diamagnet. So, this was discovered in 1933 by Meissner and uh, Oxenfeld. Uh, Oxenfeld and Meissner uh, um, found that the, uh, the, the superconducting state is, uh, it, first of all, it does not depend on the history of uh, application of the field. And uh, secondly, uh, no matter what you do, the magnetic field from inside a superconductor is always expelled. Uh, so, that is these are two examples uh, shown here. This is uh, perfect conductor for example. In a perfect conductor also uh, field gets uh, expelled. So, uh, so, so, if you had a suppose a superconductor was only a perfect conductor then the, speci uh, the specimen, suppose you take the specimen, uh, then uh, uh, cool it below its transition temperature, it becomes superconductor and then uh, uh, you put a magnetic field. Then the magnetic field will be expelled, I mean the magnetic field will not enter the, the perfect conductor. So, this is assuming that a superconductor is a perfect conductor. 
then you do the other thing you take a super such a perfect mat, mat, uh, uh, conductor and first put a magnetic field above its tc and then uh, <coughs> So, it is uh, this is when it is in normal state you, you bring it in a magnetic field. So, the magnetic field now penetrates it is inside the, so the, the perfect conductor and then uh, you cool this material this, uh, this uh, perfect conductor below its T c and it becomes superconductor then the magnetic field will remain inside the, the superconductor it is basically trapped inside the superconductor. So, this is uh, this is the scenario if a superconductor is just a perfect conductor. Okay. Now, what happens in a real superconductor? A superconductor does not bother about the history of how you applied the magnetic field. So, that is what is shown here. The specimen is first cooled below its transition temperature which is a similar situation here and then brought into the magnetic field and the magnetic field does not enter the superconductor. Now, you do the other thing it is called field cool this is called zero field cool and uh, <coughs> so you take the material in its normal state above T c put a magnetic field. So, the magnetic field enters just like here it is a normal. So, these and these are the same the first first picture and this picture are the same, but now you below bring the super actual superconductor uh, to below its transition temperature while the field was inside and then at T c you will find that once it becomes superconductor the field is expelled. So, the final outcome uh, for a real superconductor is the same the field is expelled from inside the uh, material whereas, here uh, it depends on the history whether you are zero you have done zero field cooling or field cooling if they have different uh, final states for a perfect conductor. This is very easy to show and uh, every book uh, shows this uh, many books shows show this. Uh, so, this is you can also work it out yourself that this is what is going to happen in a perfect conductor whereas, in a superconductor the final state is always the same. So, it is a thermodynamic state it is a new state of matter where uh, the superconductivity expels magnetic field this is called the Meissner Oxenfeld effect and this is this means that it is a perfect diamagnet. So, important facts that define superconductivity are uh, this uh, that uh, there is a critical field above this value an externally applied magnetic field uh, will kill the superconductivity and this is how it uh, goes typically uh, this is called the critical magnetic field and as a function of temperature at T c of course, you do not need any field to kill superconductivity. So, H c goes to 0 uh, and uh, so the, the, the typical behavior is 1 minus T by T c square. There are two types of superconductors uh, type 1 and type 2 which I will discuss uh, later on and then of course, uh, uh, so this, these two types are basically uh, outlined here uh, this I will uh, discuss again later uh, and uh, the, the type 2 one has two critical fields uh, after one critical field magnetic field can penetrate a superconductor, but only in uh, vortex uh, certain vortex uh, tubes. Uh, so, that is uh, it's a very different state uh, and that we will discuss when we discuss uh, 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 electrodynamics of a superconductor. So, that means, it is not a perfectly mice perfect Meissner state, but uh, 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 so it does not show complete diamagnetism, but that is that is an interesting state and that was one example where theory predicted uh, predicted it first and then came the experiment. Okay. So, so, some examples are given these are the materials the type 2 materials which have uh, applications which are widely applied and uh, so <coughs> they are because of the high critical field called H C 2. So, I will come back to all this uh, and start discussing the theory of uh, superconductivity what leads to superconductivity uh, from the uh, <coughs> from the next uh, uh, view graph.